welcome to the Lost Media Chronicles, a show which discusses various lost movies, music, art, you name it. You know, I tend to get a lot of requests for Nickelodeon-related material. I get it. It was a big part of the childhoods for kids from the 1990s and the 2000s. It's some of the most sought-after stuff on the Lost Media Wiki. If it aired on the network at any point and it's lost, you can bet there's a dedicated search effort that'll take up a good chunk of discussion. Perhaps no lost Nickelodeon show is searched for more than today's topic, and that's Pinwheel. Now, the story of Pinwheel goes back to the early days of Nickelodeon. Nick wasn't always known under its current name. On December 1st, 1977, an early interactive TV service called Cube was founded in Columbus, Ohio, run by Warner Communications. The service was intended to give audience audiences the ability to rent Warner Brothers movies and programs, and was offered exclusively in Columbus. Also offered to the subscribers of the service were 10 community channels that aired programming of different nature. One channel, C3, aired children's programming. Thus, the program Pinwheel was born. The show was similar to Sesame Street in that it featured live action bits with animated shorts. It was based around a Victorian age home called the Pinwheel House, where various childhood related topics were talked about. It was a fun educational show. C3 exclusively aired the show from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. in three to five hour blocks of one hour episodes. After a few months, C3 was renamed the Pinwheel Channel and was intended as a loss leader against channels like HBO that didn't have a network aimed at children without commercial interruption. In 1979, it was taken off Cube and placed on a newly formed network called Nickelodeon. Pinwheel served as the network's flagship show for years. Early stars of the show included Dr. Vivian Horner, Sandy Cavanaugh, Brad Williams, and George James. Episodes continued to be produced until either 1984 or 1989, depending on your source. The show had reruns until 1988 on Nickelodeon and until 1990 on Nick Jr. With over 260 episodes to its name, it remains Nickelodeon's largest show, both in episode count and amount of material. So, as you can guess, it gets traded around in tape collections and there's tons of episodes all over the internet, right? Guess again, Sparky! Despite being the most popular show on the network for years, it remains elusive to Nickelodeon enthusiasts. How did a show with so many episodes and with such a beloved network attached to it go missing? Well, simply put, Nickelodeon wasn't the wildly popular network it is now until it launched the Nicktoons lineup in the early 90s. It was just barely popular enough to stay afloat before then. Just like a lot of cable TV networks from the 80s, a lot of the programming has become lost just due to many people never having recorded it. On top of that, you might be finding yourself thinking, what about modern day reruns? Nickelodeon seems obsessed with exploiting a lot of its back catalog. Why not Pinwheel as well? Well, there's actually a couple of problems with that. First off, there's the likelihood that Pinwheel belongs to Warner, not Viacom. Nickelodeon wasn't bought out by Viacom until a few years into its existence. On top of that, it was a Sesame Street like show that used segments from many different creators. Thus, buying the rights to completely re-air the show would create a mess. On top of that, Nickelodeon for some strange reason isn't all that fond of the show. It's been stated that many executives of the channel look at it as an old shame of some sort. So these two factors combined have made pinwheel re-airings an impossibility. Now, there have been numerous dumps of footage from various eras of pinwheel's existence. For a while, only about six hours of footage was known to exist online. But earlier this year, a few more hours worth of footage was uncovered. Fans have noted the unique tone and delivery of the show, but there's a few specific things from Pinwheel that still remain heavily sought after. First, there's video comic books. This is a series of shorts that included dramatic readings from DC comic books. These readings range from the Green Lantern to the Flash. 
Of all these readings, the only one I know of that survived is the Swamp Thing. There's also a video promo that advertises more of these readings, but that's basically all that exists from this series. Second, there's the alleged Lost Claymation short, Clockman. This alleged animated short was made either in the 1970s or 80s, and consisted of a young girl losing her red shoes. An unkempt wizard appears and offers to give her a new pair of shoes as long as she promises to tell her parents about the events. After she fails to do so, that night he appears out of a clock in the wall, snatches her up, and demands an explanation. She offers to make it up to him by sewing stars into his night sky and then telling her parents about it the next morning. The short garnered considerable attention after Bungie.net user Commander Santa described it with a drawing attached, begging for help to find it, saying it scared him as a child. Another eerily similar description was found on AnimationNation.com, posted between 2002 and 2004. Since then, many other users from other websites have come forth and claimed that they, too, have seen this short as kids. Some claims differ in details from others, but they all share the same details of it being low-quality claymation and the creepy, unkept man appearing out of the clock. Now, people have questioned the validity of its existence, seeing as, to a lot of people, it just seems like a very well-written creepypasta. Others ask that if it's fake, then how come so many people with no connection to each other have come forth claiming to see it? Well, it's hard to say if everyone is just claiming to remember seeing something that didn't happen in a similar vein to the Mandela effect, or if this is something that re-aired frequently on Nickelodeon between 1977 to 1990 when Pinwheel was being aired. It also shares a lot of details to a classic Dutch tale, so that helps add some validity. Some people People have even suspected that it may have come from a German animation show called Unser Sons Menken. This is because Pinwheel did use a few shorts from that show. The animation style described also matches a lot of the animation style from that show. I don't want to go into too much detail on something that's existence is pure speculation, but it's a fascinating piece of media that might have existed at some points. So why is Pinwheel so sought after? Well, without Pinwheel, there'd be no Nickelodeon. That's no Rugrats, no Spongebob, no Ren and Stimpy. Television would have been a completely different beast without it. Nick fans think that it's important to have the very first show for the network catalogs. A lot of kids also connected strongly to it the same way that Sesame Street did for others. With 260 hours worth of material, that's enough to drive any lost media seeker crazy. Shows from our childhood form a close bond to us, and the show that started an entire network full of classic children's shows is definitely an important one. That about does it for this episode. Join me next time when I finally kickstart Video Game Bump 2017. See you later. I'm here with my friends. Do 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 Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon. Do 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 do